everyone and welcome back and welcome if you're new here. My name is Lauren J and I'm actually pretty excited for this video. I know I'm usually a really low energy person. I don't sound excited for anything, but I have been working really long and hard on this video and it's something that is just super fun to me and I hope you enjoy it. It makes me feel creative. Um, and I have lots of notes because I have lots of inspirations and lots of things to talk about. So let's get into it. I've had a lot of time on my hands this year. <laughs> so what I decided to do with some of that time is to spend it creating a custom nine pan palette of eyeshadow. I am obsessed with nine pans. It is my favorite number. I love the symmetry of a nine pan and I think there are so many possibilities to create a custom color story without having to do an entire like 30 pan palette but without limiting yourself to a quad or six pans. So for me it's just the happy medium of eyeshadow palettes. I love looking at them. I love collecting them and now apparently I love creating them. Well creating is a creating is a not the right word but we'll get into that um <clears throat> so what i did was i have been inspired by so many people so many creators um so many artists to create what i call the mary cassatt nine pan palette so let me show you what my palette looks like first so i used a, an old number seven holiday compact that I just took um, the backing out of and this is the color story right here. So it is a mix of teals, pinks, yellows, golds, beautiful shimmers, maybe some duochromes, um, but yeah this is this is the color story. So four mattes and five shimmers and they are all rich and beautiful, and they're all from Divina Cosmetics, uh, which is a single shadow company that makes beautiful shifting shadows. They are known for their multi-chromes, and they have done a whole series of them this year. I have not picked any of those up because I'm not fast enough, but during the summer fall, I did manage to um, just go through what was on their website and sort of create this color story inspired by a color story that I had in mind. So let me get into that. I will throw up on the screen a picture that I created. I created this in Keynote on my iPad. It's a slideshow program um, that just allows you to layer items on top of each other so you can do a little bit more than you normally would be able to do without a custom app on the iPad. As you can see, I sort of chose <laughs> um, a self-portrait of Mary Cassatt. I, that is the Smithsonian um, self-portrait. Um, beautiful. And um, I've sort of <laughs> entitled myself self-portrait beauty. I'm sure someone out there probably has a trademark on that. It's just something I made up. I'm not going into business for myself. But anyway, that's what I'm sort of calling this and basing this on. Um, so this is a, a palette inspired by her work, my impressions of her work, um, my own personal relationship with art and art history, my memories of her paintings, my memories of art, and um, obviously my color preferences. I'm a big fan of blues. I love the way blues and yellows look on my eyes. Um, so I'm not going to tend to go for a purple color story or a green color story. I just tend to like blues and then I just like to throw in some shades that I think I can make work with sort of the base of those blue and yellow, teal and yellow shades. I'm not an artist. I am not an art historian. Um, I am just a dilettante basically. I spent a lot of time going to art galleries and museums with my mother who is actually an artist and does actually have a degree in art. So I learned at her feet. Um, I learned through just spending a lot of time and reading a lot of um, books like this, um, which is a book that I have had since I was a child. 
Um, and this is just a book of paintings. I remember going to Walden Books and finding all these like large style um, artist books. I think I have one on Da Vinci and Edward Hopper and all of that. So and a lot of the inspirations for paintings that I took the colors from came from here. My mother has always been very inspired by the Impressionist. She herself is, um, she is a printmaker. She makes is etchings, uh, mezzotints, and she is very inspired by the Impressionist. She is very inspired by uh, Japanese printmaking, which Mary Cassatt was also inspired by, and which the Impressionists were also inspired by. Um, and she is also very interested in the way that light falls on objects, which I think intersects a lot with what the Impressionists were doing. So again, I'm taking a lot of this from what I learned from her and my memories of this. My major inspiration for the Mary Cassatt palette um, <laughs> Uh, where again my mother, um, artist, uh, art major, and has shown me so much about the art world and the indie makeup world. So indie makeup has been killing it this year. 2020 has not been a great year for makeup, but it has been a great year I think for innovation in the indie world and for indies keeping going, keeping things moving, um, keeping people inspired. I am very inspired by Davina Cosmetics. Um, the owner, Deandra Irene, I believe is her name. She is so creative. She works so hard and she just creates beautiful single shadows. I am also very much inspired by Muse Beauty, who created the Impressionism palette. Uh, I believe that is a, is a 16 pan palette of beautiful colors inspired by the works of the Impressionists, specifically Van Gogh, Renoir, Monet, Manet, all of them, uh, all of that circle of Impressionists, and lest we forget, uh, Berthe Morisot and Mary Cassatt, who was the American Impressionist. This is also inspired by creators who inspire me with their own palette designs, people like Angelica Nyquist, who introduced me to a lot of the makers of single shadows and sort of inspired my passion for creating um, custom palettes. Uh, also LS who does so many swatch parties and custom color stories and has done like her version of dream palettes, her version of dream palettes from specific companies that she would like to see. And she also does so much research into the videos that she puts out. So I'm very much inspired by her. Also people like Tina the Fancy Face who go and dupe out palettes with their own singles. Just they swatch and show you how you can dupe out palettes and what you already have in your collection. There are so many people on Instagram who create custom nine pan palettes. I don't necessarily follow them, but I see them come up um, on my search page all the time and they're just so beautiful and I'm sorry that I can't name them but there are so so many people that do custom palettes with their singles. So this by no means is me um, saying that I am creating this color story all on my own or that it's even very unique or that um, I can do it better than anyone else. That is not what this is about. This is me being inspired by a community, the art community, the beauty community, the YouTube community, the Instagram community. And finally, of course, I am inspired by Mary Cassatt, the American Impressionist. She was born in 1844 and she died in 1926. Uh, she is a woman who not only created some of the most famous paintings of the American Impressionist movement and the Impressionist movement as a whole, um, she traveled the world uh, she made beautiful art and she, her art has been a part of my life since my childhood. This is not a research heavy video. Again, I'm not an art historian, so I don't have a lot of the facts of her life um, included in this. I, I only know of one real deep biography that has been done of her and I have not been able to get my hands on it. So then other, what I, other than what I could like find on Wikipedia or in this book. That I have um, I'm basing it on that and also again just my memories my impressions my individual relationship with her work so take that as you will and this is also my attempt to use a single brands shadows 
um, to create this custom color story. Um, it's not my perfect version of what each shade would be, but Divino's quality is outstanding, just outstanding. And I'm not a person that's sitting, um, working at a lab um, with pigments and formulas. I'm not out there mixing things and creating my perfect color. I'm just riding an idea on the coattails of people who are actually out there making things, creating things, and getting it done. I am going to switch to doing a voiceover at this time and telling you about each of the colors, uh, why I picked each one, where, what I would name them, and what the actual name from Davina is, why I picked the shade from Davina, and some of the art that I think um, inspires the shade and matches this shade and why I think it's appropriate to the color story. I am going to go from left to right based on the palette mood board that I posted earlier that uh, I originally created all the shades for and sort of tweaked and decided on the finishes and the names and things. So the first one we're going to start with is a color that I would have named Degas. This is for Edgar Degas, the French Impressionist, and it is the color Dabster by Davina. So as you can see here, it is sort of a gray smoky metallic. I had originally envisioned this as more of a satiny gray, but I think Dabster does a really good job of representing that um, deep satiny smokiness. Um, it's not too, too metallic. I think it has just the right amount of shininess to represent sort of um, what I am thinking of to inspire this shade. So Edgar Degas was one of Mary Cassatt's uh, great friends in the art world. He painted her several times and he invited her to join the group of Impressionists. And why I chose gray for him was because I see him pictured in um, photograph. He's in his older years, he's got a long beard and he's in a gray suit, at least the suit is gray in the black and white photos. Uh, but he also painted Mary Cassatt in a gray suit in a museum, um, which is one of his many portraits of her that he created um, over their friendship. And Degas is also one of my favorite Impressionists. I love his uh, portraits of ballerinas, his use of color, his use of broad stroke, his sort of sketch-like technique. So, ironically, we are starting with another painter in a palette inspired by a different painter. Now, the second shade that I picked is a color that I called Sleepy Baby. That is represented here by Nora from Divina. This is a sweet baby pink matte. There's just a little hint of lavender in it. That seems to work pretty well with this color story. So I based this on a particular painting called Sleepy Baby, around made around 1910. It is a pastel on paper. So as you can see, this is one of her famous mother and child paintings. This is a theme that she is very known for, a mother holding her baby, and I just felt that that baby pink really represented the sort of sweetness of that theme, the sort of rosy cheekness of a lot of the paintings. My apologies on the next shade. I am probably not pronouncing this right because it is in French and my knowledge is limited, but I will try my best. So this is a shade that I am calling La Jeune Fille. Now, this is based on a particular painting, La Jeune Fille, an oil on canvas from 1910. It is represented here by the shade Pyramid. I envisioned this as a lightest of light shimmer yellow, just the lightest shimmer yellow ever. And as you can see from the painting that I based it on, I think that is very appropriate. 
there is a slight pink shift in this shade that doesn't quite go with the painting because it has more green tones in it but I do think it works overall with the theme of the palette it works with the color sleepy baby starting off with the middle row now we have this gorgeous shade that I am calling Lydia represented here by the shade fierce and boy is this shade fierce this is beautiful I am so impressed with this but to get on with the inspiration I originally envisioned this as more of a satiny red however I am not hating the metallicness of this this is gorgeous and I will take it and it goes with its original name fierce which I think is also a nice um, ode to the person that I'm basing it on, who I don't actually know a lot about, but her name was Lydia, and she was Mary Cassatt's sister. And this is supposed to represent the color of her sister's hair. Her sister Lydia was the subject of many of her paintings. She is shown repeatedly Throughout Mary Cassatt's work, she is shown both in domestic life, the quiet moments, and she's also shown in the public um, moments of a woman's life. There are paintings of her crocheting. There are paintings of her reading. I actually have a poster of Lydia reading in the garden that I got from the exhibition at the Art Institute that I attended many, many years ago, many, many years ago, um, that I've always had in my room. There are pictures of her socializing at the opera, which represents that sort of public uh, part of women's life at that time. I love this inspiration because even though I don't know much about Lydia, to me, it represents not only that sense of family, that is heavy throughout Mary Cassatt's work. It also shows the different facets of female life at the turn of the century. So that is what this shade represents to me. Now we are on to the shade in the very middle, which is a metallic peacocky teal. I love blues, so this was always going to be right in the middle. And I am calling this Summertime. It is represented here by the shade Mist. And as you can see, it is a metallic blue-green. And this is based on a particular painting, or set of paintings anyway. Uh, this is called Summertime. It is an oil on canvas from 1894. The one that I am looking at is from the Armand Hammer collection at UCLA. And there is also another version of this painting that has a few more pinky tones, but it basically depicts a mother and her daughter on a pond or on a lake in a boat, and they are surrounded by ducks. And so I wanted to pick up the blues, the mix of blues and greens. So this is a deep mix of summer inspired blues and greens. I wanted that heavy shine to mimic the sparkling on the water without going to a glitter. This teal shows up in so many ways in Marie Cassatt's work and it is so beautiful. The final shade in this middle row is a matte, and I am calling this Mother and Child. I think you can guess why. Now this I am basing on a particular painting. This is a deep sunflower yellow matte, and it is represented here by the color Anastasia. This is based on the painting Woman and Children from 1906. This is an oil on canvas from Harvard University. Now, there are so many paintings of mother and children. I think I have explained that to death in this video, 
but this painting also shows so many of the yellows that are used throughout her work. Not only in her oils, it also represents the yellows in her dry point paintings. For me, that yellow sunflower matte uh, shows up throughout her work. Starting off the bottom row, we are going big with this metallic, which I am calling Loge, represented here by the shade Majesty. Now this shade is all about the Gilded Age. It is all about a night at the opera. There are quite a few paintings of women at the opera. I noted that Lydia was one of those women, but you can see women in boxes at the opera with the gilding all around. So that is what I am basing this on. There's a particular painting called In the Loge, circa 1879 but there are also several others that I'm basing this on. Again, it's that Gilded Age feel. It's also personally my impression of the Palais Garnier in Paris. Uh, I'm not saying that's where any of these were painted, but it sort of represents that for me. I visited Paris in 2018 and to me, it represents that luxe, rich, antique gold with a lot of orangey brightness to it. It also works with that red color for Lydia, I think, and it works with the deep yellow matte. Now, the middle shade on the bottom row is a shade I don't think I got quite right, but I think that it does work overall with the other shades in the palette. I envisioned this as a shade called Tea Table. It is represented here by the shade Candy. And what I was envisioning was a deep matte porcelain blue. Something like the shade Fine China from ColourPop's Blue Moon palette. Something just a little bit deeper than what Candy ended up being. I was making a best guess. I didn't get it quite right, but I do think it works with shades like Summertime. I do think it works with shades like Anastasia. I do think it works with shades like Loge. And I'm basing this on women's life, domestic life, as painted by Mary Cassatt. There is a painting called Lady at the Tea Table from 1885 an oil on canvas at the Met. It's a favorite color of mine, a favorite theme of mine, so I really wanted to incorporate that because I love blue. Uh, so this is also all about women's social life. They're visiting at home. There are quite a few paintings of tea time. There's a dry point. There's another one with a silver tea set. Cassatt uses a lot of those deep, true blues in her paintings. The painting Margot in Blue from 1902 is an example. Also the painting A Kiss for Baby Anne from 1897 that's actually a pastel on paper I think also represents that use of true blues in her work. So I was trying to get more of a sense of true blue as, a, as opposed to like a peacocky teal. Didn't quite get it with candy, but again, I think that shade does work overall with the palette, and it does go beautifully with the shade Mist slash Summertime. And the final shade in this nine pan palette, again, one that I don't think that I got quite right, but I am calling this shade Armchair, represented here by the shade Jaded. I envision this as a bright matte turquoise based on the painting Little Girl in a Blue Armchair from 1878. So this is a painting of a child and a little dog. The child, I believe, is a friend, the child of a friend of Degas. And Degas is also said to have helped her with this painting, helped Mary Cassatt with this painting. It's an oil on canvas and that vibrant blue green of the armchair and the furniture in this. 
I think actually that this shade matches candy more closely, but I do think Jaded works well for those teal undertones in all of her paintings, her dry points, her pastels. Uh, I think that it works very well with candy and it also works well with mist. I think it works well with Anastasia. Um, I'm using the Davina names, of course, for these shades, not my names. But I think it's not quite what I was looking for. Again, I was making a best guess based on internet photos, but I do think it works. And I am calling this one armchair. And of course, that little dog, that little dog. If you will notice, I have swatched all of these shades on my arm. You have probably seen that in the video. Um, and I've been having these shades swatched on my arm for a couple of hours now and I am very cold and I would like to put my jacket back on. So I'm just going to show this again one last time before I wipe it off. And then also show you the palette again. Now this is going to look different in different lights. I tried to show it in different lights. I tried to show it in natural light. I've got it showed with uh, soft boxes right here um, so you know take that as you will the colors that you see on Davina's website are probably also going to be a little bit different so again that is my custom 910 palette the Mary Cassatt palette uh, I hope you enjoyed this little trip through Mary Cassatt's art and uh, my take on a palette inspired by her art I am reading yes I know I'm reading um, let me know what you think of my custom color story. Uh, what would inspire you to create a custom palette, a custom eyeshadow palette? Uh, what other kinds of products would you add to a collection? Like, would you include lippies? Would you include liquid eyeshadows? Would you include pencils, some eye pencils or lip pencils? What would you What, what would you add? Um, I'm I'm kind of stuck on eyeshadows, obviously, but what, what would you put in a collection like this? Um, and what are you inspired by? What, what inspires you to create? Um, so if you could please leave a like, a comment, uh, subscribe if you'd like to see more things like this. Um, I would really love to do more videos like this. They are a lot of work, but if someone will watch them, I would happily make them. Keep an eye out for a look. This is a look using this palette. I used actually all of the shades on my eyes today, um, mostly the teals and the yellows on the top, but I did use those deeper colors on the bottom along with, you know, to make a liner. Um, and I'll be doing another look, probably not this look, um, with, the, with some of the colors in this palette, probably not all of them. Probably not all nine shades like with this look. <laughs> so thank you so, so much for watching. Check the description box for a list of all the information on the creators that inspired me, the, the portraits and paintings that inspired me, the shadows that I used to create this look. I hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for stopping by. Bye.